Hi, and welcome back to Yoga with Tim. I'm Tim, and today Stacy is back. So we're gonna work on a little flow sequence that's gonna incorporate using our outer hips. To learn this, lie down on your side, and this is almost like something that I stole from Pilates. So you're gonna lie down on your side with your bottom leg bent a little, and then your top leg straight, just like that. Okay, now what's important for this exercise is that this top leg, you keep it slightly internally rotated like this, like the big toe points down, and that's gonna make sure that you work your glute med instead of your glute max. So hold that leg up and then push through it. Now I want you to feel like this leg is dead weight and you're holding your leg just from this butt muscle. Your spine is long. Now as you exhale, start to push up towards the ceiling, but pretend like I'm pushing against your foot. Again, that dead weight feeling and feel that buttock muscle engage and then slowly lower your leg back down. And as you exhale, push up and keep the big toe pointing down. See if you can lift it up a little higher, Stacy. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Hold there and then slowly back down. Good, and then push it back up. And you'll feel that this bottom leg is having to do work too. Push up a little higher and then reach it away from you and slowly lower. So you're keeping your bottom waist lifted like Stacy's doing all four sides of the waist long. Exhale, push up. Feel that butt muscle turn on the outer hip and slowly lower. Good. 60 more times. Lift the leg up, but keep lifting from the back of the heel instead of the big toe, back down. Now take the leg forward slightly, like 10 or 15 degrees, and then give me five right there. One, two, three, four, five. Take it up about 15 more degrees, pause there, and one, two, three, four, don't let the left waist sink, five, and release. Flip over to the other side. Could you feel it in your hip at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> so we want those to be, to be able to activate when you're balancing on one leg. That's why this is so, such an important exercise. So your core is turned on, the spine is pulled long, hold that leg, rotate it, and then as you exhale, start to push up and slowly back down. Exhale, push up. Did you ever do these in Pilates? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the band though? Yeah. You can do this with the resistance band too if you want to suffer, truly suffer. Ankle now, weights. Oh, ankle weights. Ah, oh, jeez. That's a good way to do it too. But your own body weight is fine if you've never done it because it's just going to get that muscle to turn on and that's all we need. I guess you could put a block on your... <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> Okay, then hold and bring it forward about 15 degrees. Pause there and give me five lifts. Two, three, four, five. Take it forward 15 more degrees and do five lifts. Good, then roll onto your belly. Stretch your arms back behind you. Press the tops of the feet down, spin your inner thighs up, and then engage the backs of the legs, engage your glutes. Lift your navel, lift your shoulders, head, chest up off the mat. Like we practiced on block hugging week, pretend like you're squeezing in on the thighs with the block, squeezing in with the thighs. Okay, and then engage your buttocks, lift your belly, and bring your hands right underneath your elbows. Hold there, chest open, lower your heart back down, press up onto your hands and your knees, stretch back into your first downward facing dog. So press down, especially into your middle three knuckles, and lift up on your inner shoulders, spin the inner shoulder up towards the ceiling as you roll your outer shoulders down. Grow your hips up and away from your wrists. Then inhale into a plank position. Bring your shoulders right over the heel of your hand. Exhale, stretch back into dog pose. Inhale, glide forward into plank. Exhale, stretch back into dog. Inhale into plank. 
Now pull your right knee up to your chest, push the floor down, lift your belly up, lift your middle up, pull that knee up as high as you can. And then as you inhale, stretch it back into a one-legged plank. Exhale, pull your knee back up, lift up as high as you can as you push the floor down. Inhale, one-legged plank. Exhale, pull it up, lift up, and step your foot all the way up by your thumb. Now come up onto your fingertips. Now remember that outer butt muscle. Feel that start to engage in your right outer butt and then float your arms back behind you without the butt kicking out to the side. Engage the outer hips, reach your heart forward. Then set your left hand down onto the floor or onto a block and twist, take your right arm up. But do you have the control in that right outer hip to not let it swing out to the side? So you're gonna feel that muscle turn on. Is it the same feeling, Stacy? Can you feel it? I forgot, I haven't done that one in a while. No, I think it's the same feel. It's the same muscle. It's gonna turn on and that's gonna help you to fire the muscles of the spine. Bring your hand back down and step back into plank. Or is she gonna say no? no okay. Hold in your plank with your chest open and then bring your left knee up to your chest. Pull up. Inhale, reach back into one legged plank. Exhale, pull it back up. Inhale into one legged plank. Exhale, pull it up, hold, and step your foot all the way up by your thumb. Then come up onto your fingertips, find your length, engage that left outer hip, stay long through your spine, and then float your arms back behind you. Because as you fire that left outer hip muscle, feel the spine elongate, and set your right hand down but without the hip kicking out to the side, turn from your rib cage, keep lengthening out. Like I drew a line down the center of your mat, reach your hips straight back, reach your head forward. Then bring your left hand back down and step back into plank pose. Stretch back into downward dog. Walk your feet all the way forward to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back, find length. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up to stand, raise your arms up. Exhale, the hands to your heart, samastiti. Inhale, raise your arms up, sun salutation A. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, find length. Step back into plank pose, one leg at a time. Turn on your legs, hug in with your thighs, turn on your glutes, still releasing your groins up to the ceiling. Now open up your collarbones, feel the spine elongate, shift forward and lower slowly to elbow height, maintaining that. Inhale into upward facing dog, roll your chest open. Exhale into downward facing dog, stretch back. Hold in your down dog, reconnect into your hand roots, Grow the arms through the knuckles. Reconnect into the big toe mound, second toe mound, and draw the inner legs up. Draw energy up into your hip sockets from your inner legs. Walk your feet all the way forward to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back. Ooh, it's getting hot. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale into chair pose. Sit your hips back. Raise your arms up. and stand in mountain. Inhale into chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower into chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Warrior one, step your right foot. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot up by your left thumb. Turn your back heel. Now feel that same outer hip support to help you stay tall through your spine. It's gonna help the core to activate, really important. 
Bring your hands back down. Step back and lower slow to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Hold in your down dog. Grow your spine through the reach of your hands, through the stretch up through your legs. Then bend your knees and look forward. Step or float up lightly to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale into chair pose. Bend your knees, sit your hips back. Come all the way up to stand, mountain pose. Now shift the weight over into your right foot, but I want you to feel that outer hip turn on so that you don't sink over to the right as you bring your left knee up. Then bring your hands to prayer. Put a little bend in your right knee. Feel your outer hip support you. Tip your heart forward and then start to stretch that leg back behind you. Good, now bend your right knee and step back into crescent lunge. Raise your arms up. Bring hands to prayer. Lean your chest out over your knee. And still from your strong right outer hip, keep your length as you twist. Take your left elbow to your knee. One way that I can tell that that muscle isn't turning on is if your right knee caves into the midline. So can you keep the knee pressed so it's pointing straight ahead? That'll help the outer hip to activate and then make sure that you still have that length straight out through the center of your mat. Good, bring your hands back down to the mat. Step back into downward dog or take a vinyasa. Ooh, adding the vinyasa, damn Stacy. Look in between your hands, step or foot lightly to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose, bend knees, sit back, utkatasa. Come all the way up to stand. Shift the weight over into your left foot. Without falling over to the side, bring your right knee up. Bring your hands to prayer. Now put a little bend in your left knee, start to lean your heart forward as you stretch your leg back. But now can you keep the hip bones level to the floor so they don't cheat open to the right? Feel the work in that outer hip muscle. If the hips open up to the right, then it's that glute max turning on. Don't do that. Two more breaths here. Then bend your knee, big step back into crescent, raise your arms up. Bring hands to prayer, lean your chest out over your knee, and twist. Energize through your back leg, feel a lift from your back inner thigh up to your spine, and reach through your hips towards your back heel. Bring your hands back down to the mat, step back into downward dog, or take a vinyasa. Warrior one, step your right foot. Inhale, come up. Bring your hands into reverse prayer, or just press your knuckles together in your upper back. Then straighten your right leg and step your back foot slightly closer. Roll your shoulders open, chest open, inhale. Exhale, start to fold forward towards halfway out over your leg. Now pause in that position. As you press even into your feet, inhale, draw your navel up the front of your spine towards your heart, and exhale, lengthen all the way out over your leg. And the key here is as you press into your right foot, you should feel that right outer hip grab, pull back and up. 
Press into your feet. Inhale, come up to stand. Right hand on your right hip. Raise your left arm straight up. Reach, twist, put your hand onto the outside of your foot, block or floor. Then look down and see that you're long to the big toe line. Once you have that length, the butt reaches straight back, middle upper spine crown reaches straight ahead. Then turn your left outer side back rib towards your right pinky toe and twist, take your right arm up. Standing splits, right hand down. Raise your back leg up from the inner thigh. Lean into that right foot. Then lower your left leg to meet your right. And squat down for Malasan. So with your feet together, take the knees wide enough for your ribs to fit in between and start to walk your hands all the way forward. Then hold here or bend your elbows back, hook your knees into your upper arms and lean into crow pose. Good, and release chaturanga or just step back into downward dog. In the spirit of the arm balance sequence, coming out, series coming out this month, doing some Stacy has the best crow, so it's, it's good to look at hers. Step your left foot for warrior one. One day she's going to teach me how to do it. Inhale, raise your... Show me your secrets. Bring your hands behind your back. Take reverse prayer or press your knuckles together in your upper back. Then straighten your left leg. Step the back foot a little bit closer. Inhale, open the chest shoulders. And exhale, start to lean out halfway out over your leg. Now, when you go to lean up, all your posture muscles will want to turn off. Slouch over. Don't do slouch asana. Keep the front of the spine long. Keep the legs turned on. Draw energy up and reach to the feet. Then exhale. Go all the way out over your leg. Press down into the feet and inhale. Come back up to stand. Left hand on your hip, raise your right arm straight up. Then reach, twist, put your hand onto the outside of the foot. As you inhale, get your length. Reach your hips straight back like I pulled you with a rope on the hip, straight back. Middle and upper spine, lengthen straight out. Then turn the right back outer side rib towards your left pinky toe and take your left arm up. Breathe all the way down into the bottom of the lungs. And this pose is usually very challenging to breathe, much less just hold it. Then bring your left hand down and step up into standing splits. Lean the weight into your left foot. Now keep that left outer hip active. Don't let the hip sink to the side. So I promise you, the stronger that outer butt muscle gets, the more healthy your core will become. Lower your right leg. Good, and let your head drop. Just because of the fact that we spend most of our time walking around instead of doing abdominal crunches. So we want to teach ourselves how to be able to activate your spine while you're standing on your feet. And it comes through the standing pose, just like we're working on today. Now from here, lower the buttocks to the floor and come into boat pose. Bring your knees up, stretch your arms forward. If you have the hamstring mobility too, lift the feet all the way up. If you're uh, stiff in the hamstrings, then keep your knees bent. Good, now come into bent knee Ardha Navasana. Lower slowly, hold there. Engage your abdominals and push just your left leg forward, keeping your low abs in. Change legs. Keep those abs in, reach from your outer armpits towards your hips, change legs, change legs. This is kamikaze fly, it's like going nuts. <laughs> Lift your bottom leg 
and then stretch your left leg out to meet it. Ahimsa, what the hell? Just draw your abs in. And then come back up into boat pose. Good, reverse plank. Put your hands a foot behind you, plant your feet. Now this one requires a, quite a bit of shoulder mobility. So first I just want you to feel that you can lift your heart and roll your shoulders open. If it feels tight in the front of your shoulders, just stay there. Otherwise, see if you can start to lift your hips up and increase the stretch in the arms. But then feel in your legs, engage your leg muscles, engage your glutes. Then roll the heart all the way up as high as you can. And lower your butt back down. Again, boat pose. Bring the knees up. Lower right into low boat pose, but see if you can get the abdominals to turn on just as well as when you had bent knees. Scoot those abs in, firm the buttocks out of your back. He's getting you too now. <laughs> Come back up into boat pose. And reverse plank, hands behind you. Lift your heart, open up your chest, then lift the hips up. Lower your butt back down. Sit with your legs wide apart, Upavisa Konasana. Then take your left leg into Janu Shirshasana position and twist to the left. <clears throat> So let your thigh bones release down and away from each other, and then feel yourself grow tall up over your pelvis. This reminds me of the Brock and Krista Cahill ad, or the, for, and one, one of them was like this. Do you remember that one? Okay, then uh, stretch with your right hand out over your leg towards your inner foot. Take your left arm up and over. But keep descending your left thigh bone, left hip, and then slide your left hand behind your head, lean your head back into your arm to help to open up the tension in your armpit chest. You could Google it, it's on Hardtail, uh, Hardtail, Cahill's, you'll find it. Inhale, come back up, and change sides. She's legit, by the way. She's gonna be teaching a workshop in LA. That's nice. Turn to face your right leg. Let your right thigh release down and away from you. Feel the spine grow tall. And then start to stretch out over your left leg. With your left hand, reach towards the inner foot, but keep descending this right hip, right thigh. Take the right arm up and over and slide the hand behind your head. As you lean your head back into your arm, start to open up your side rib, armpit chest. Then inhale, come back up. Take your right leg wide and start to walk your hands forward in the middle. Now each step, each little crawl that you do, you should still get this feeling of the thigh bones releasing down and all 10 of your toes straight, stay straight up. So for some, that might just be sitting straight up. For others, just a little crawl forward. For others, you might be able to walk all the way and put your head down, chest down. So find your edge and then don't try to pass, jam past it, just be there and breathe. Inhale, come back up. Then lie down onto your back for Shavasana, course pose. So let your palms turn up, let the feet fall open. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Let your body drop into the mat. Empty the tension in your feet and your legs. Let the pelvis drop. Let go of the tension in your abdominals and your chest. Let the shoulders relax and the arm muscles relax. Relax the neck. 
Empty the jaw and the tongue. Let all the muscles of the face relax completely. Relax the scalp. And let yourself sink deeper inward into the feeling of space in the inner body. Bend your knees and roll over to your right side. Press yourself up to seated. Thank you. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, if you learned something new with that hip thing, I'd love to hear it from you. Um, if you have any questions about poses that you'd like to learn more about, leave it in the comments below or suggestions for future videos. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any videos. And what's the other thing they're supposed to do? I think that's all the things. Oh, if you want to learn more about arm balancing, then sign up for the Conscious Movement Community. I'll put the link below where uh, I just released the Arm Balance series, which is going to teach you all these different techniques. If uh, someone like me could learn to get into these arm balances, someone very uncoordinated uh, and uh, not very flexible by using these techniques, then anybody could do it, I guarantee it. Or your money back or something like that. I don't know. Okay, cool. So uh, click that link, check that out, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.